right bracket chapter 1. Introduction. Implanted within the breast of every human being is the fear of death. Nearly everyone has a desire to live forever, in spite of the cares, miseries and sorrows of mortality. To drink from that elusive fountain of youth is a universal desire. Death terrifies us because we lack an understanding of that common fate. God has wisely designed these things, however, so that man would want to remain to fulfill his mission on earth. It is commonly believed that within the body exists a spirit that is not extinguished at death. However, very few have a knowledge of where the spirit goes or what is its final destiny. Those few people who understand man's ultimate destiny say that the spirit in man is eternal, that life continues after the death of the body, and that all spirits depart to a world of living spirits called paradise. Too often, men fail to realize that the conditions in the next life are predicated upon the kind of pilgrimage he charts for himself in this one. Many are too blinded by the glitter of this world to see the glory of the next. Jesus summarized his teachings in one simple statement. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Matt. 6 19-20. Right bracket Usually it is only when men face death that they seriously contemplate its consequences. Perhaps Brian Young best expressed it when he said, What would money have to do with you, if you went out on the threshold of eternity, and eternity opened to you? Would you have the apostasy as you have now? A little money is more to such persons than the salvation of all the sons and daughters of Adam. I wish I had a voice like ten thousand earthquakes, that all the world might hear and know the loving kindness of the Lord. I am telling you things that are before me constantly. When men and women are reaching after the perishable things of this world, and will step out of the path of duty and endanger their salvation, it has been said that it hurts Brother Brian's feelings. It is true, and I could even weep over such, and the angels weep over us to see our foolishness that we are so giddy-headed as to run after the fading things of the world, and set our minds and feelings upon riches, and neglect our duty in preparing ourselves for the coming of the Son of Man, for the coming of the ancient and modern apostles and prophets, for the redemption of Zion, and the redeeming of our dear friends in every age of the world when the priesthood was not upon the earth. J.D. 6 297 when people attend a funeral, suffering the loss of a child, a parent, or a mate, then they think about the realities of a life after death. Seemingly the only other influence that causes them to contemplate the future is the gospel. How important, then, are these glad tidings to others? How preponderant and overshadowing are the principles of salvation compared to the fleeting treasures of a temporal world? Right bracket if our future life is so dependent upon our manner of living in this one, what price can be placed upon a message to others that will improve their lives? What can be done to convince others of the realities of the spirit world? What value can be placed upon the glad tidings of the gospel that will move others to a better life and understanding of the blessings of achieving a glorious eternal life? With a proper understanding of paradise, a man can better appreciate the whole plan of salvation. Knowing the reasons for a place called paradise, man should strive to live a better and more worthwhile life as a mortal.